Okay, hi, we are live. Hi, Maya. <laughs> Hello, Sandra. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to have you again with us. Thank you. So, hello, sahla fikun. Yom and Lele rah nahke ma Maya, our child and adolescent and family coach uh, uh, expert uh, on how personality develops in teens. هلا رح خلي مايا هي تعرف أكثر عن حالة وليالي ما بيعرفها هيك تتعرف عليها. She's uh, an amazing uh, psychologist and. Uh, يعني قد ايه قد ايه قد ايه خبيره وقد ايه قلبها قلبها عطوف وقد ايه كمان شي شي ليفز اول هير اول هير تيبس كمان لانه شي زمام هلا بتحكي لكم اكثر هي عن خبرتها سو مثل ما شفتوا صرنا على بلاتفورم جديده لسيره شوي بدكم تعانوا معنا بس اول فتره لنتعود نحن وانتم على البلاتفورم الجديده سو بليز اني كومنتس اني ديفيكولتيز ذات يو فيس بليز ريتش اوت تو مي انا كل الوقت اون اون ذا فون اي كان انسر على الواتساب اكتبوا لي اذا في اي مشكله بنحلها سوا مثل ما لاحظتوا هلا مبلشين بمحل اسمه راوند تيبل سو نحن بالسكشن على البلاتفورم اسمها راوند تيبل وهلا وي ار برودكاستنج لايف عم تحضرونا لايف انا ومايا ورح تعملوا اكسرسايزز معنا الطريقه الوحيده يلي براوند تيبل فيكم تتفاعلوا معنا هي ثرو تشات اونلي ثرو تشات سو نحن ما بنقشعكم ما بنسمعكم وبالتشات بليز ميك شور اذا ما بدكم اسمكم يبين بالريكوردينج لانه نحن هلا عم نسجل تقدروا ترجعوا تحضروا السيشنز وتغيركم كمان يلي قفى سيشن اليوم بيقدر يرجع يحضرها ميك شور وقتها تسالوا السؤال في في كويستشن مارك تسالوا السؤال تبعكم في تاب هي كويستشن مارك شكلها عندكم اوبشن تسالوا السؤال انونيمسلي اوكي تما يبين اسمكم بالريكوردينج سو ميك شور بليز يو اسك يور كويستشنز انونيمسلي اف يو دونت وونت يور نيم تو شو اب فيكم تعملوا معنا تشات حيلا وقت إذا ما عندكم مشكلة كمان فيكم تسألونا أسئلتكم على الشات. رح نضل هون براوند تيبل أراوند 40 تو 45 minutes. رح رح مايا تشرح كون عم نسجل ونعمل اكسرسايزز معكم. من بعدها بنوقف راوند تيبل وبتنقلوا معنا على رومز. هلا أنتم مش قاشعين رومز. أول ما نخلص من هون كلنا بنعمل ريفرش للبراوزر تبعنا بصير يبين عنا سكشن اسمها رومز. اوكي بتنقلوا معنا على الرومز الروم بيكون اسمها هاو بيرسوناليتي ديفلوبس ان تينز بنكبس عليها لرومز بنفوت فيكم تفوتوا وساعتها برومز فيكم تحكوا معنا ثرو uh, بنسمعكم ثرو فويس اند ثرو فيديو وكمان ثرو تشات بالرومز ما بنسجل ففيكم تسالونا كل اسئلتكم لايف ما بنسجل فيكم تحكوا حتى على الشات كل المعلومات يلي بتقولوها بقلب رومز بتختفي من بعد ما نخلص الدسكشن تبعنا، سو so ما بيبقى ولا اسد، uh, ما بنسجل ابدا. سو سو هيدي ال هيدي ال هيدا السيت اب تبعنا، عملنا هيك وقسمناهم كرمال نقدر نسجل شقفه من الورك شوب دائما تنقدر نسجل شقفه وتقدروا ترجعوا لها وكل الاحاديث والدسكشنز والبيرسونال ستوريز تبعكم ما بنكون عم نسجلها. Uh, بلا ما نتاخر اكثر Uh, Maya, أهلا وسهلا again, و please introduce yourself وخلينا نبلش. أنا uh, I'll be monitoring the Q&A, Maya, و uh, when, when we need to uh, post something و هيك, I will be posting on the platform. Perfect. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for this wonderful platform and this initiative. يعني سيرة is, I know, doing wonders. يعني بسمع from the people we've worked with, the people that have joined your platform that you're just making a big change and a big difference. So thank you for providing this. attendees and members of Sira. So thank you again. Welcome everybody. Uh, I am a graduate from the University of Houston uh, with a degree in cognitive psychology. I'm also uh, uh, certified from the Aaron Bex Institute in CBT therapy. I have a certification from the ICF, which is the International Coaching Federation in Life and Executive Coaching. Uh, family, parenting, and youth. Um, I'm also uh, certified from Cornell University in the psychology of leadership. And my favorite title, as Sandra said, I'm a mother as well. I'm a mother of three kids, three wonderful kids. 
I have two teenagers and one on the way. So uh, the one on the way, so we can say I have three teenagers at home. So uh, again, I uh, thank you for being here. I know, I know it's late and uh, you're dedicating this time. I hope that this workshop will be beneficial to you. Uh, uh, there's a lot of tools that you'll be assessing yourself with today. So please, if you can grab a pen and a paper, a pencil and paper, because you will be doing some assessments. Uh, this workshop is a lot, I, sh I shouldn't say a lot different. It's a little bit different than the rest of our workshops because it's a lot of me talking, but it's a lot of you doing assessments. It's about personality and it's about you as a parent and your, your team, your adolescent at home. So please take your time with the assessments and I will give time as we go through and uh, talk about it. Here we are, we've introduced ourselves. What to expect today? Uh, we're gonna talk about what adolescent development is, exactly what the team is going through. We forget to do as parents and as professionals, we forget to understand and, and empathize with what these adolescents are going through. So we are gonna talk a little bit about what their changes are, what's going on with them, briefly, not too much. I know there's nothing I can say here that you can't look up on Google. Uh, we're going to assess your parenting style. So today you're going to be able to use a, an assessment tool that's going to allow you to kind of narrow down to what kind of parent you are and what kind of parenting style you have. Uh, we're going to do an assessment of what you believe your child or your teen's personality type is. And to kind of bridge them, align them together to create more harmony in the relationship between the parent and the adolescent. Well, at the end, like Sandra said, we will be moving to the round table where, or to, where you can be asking questions and I'm open to anything. I like this quote a lot. Parenting is a choice you make every day to put someone else's happiness and well-being ahead of your own, to teach the hard lessons, to do the right thing, even when you're not sure what the right thing is, and to forgive yourself over and over again for doing everything wrong. I know that as parents, especially with teenagers, whether it be in my professional life or in my personal life, adolescence is the most challenging part of parenting. These little kids are becoming little adults. And we as parents wake up every morning hoping that we'll do the best we can and go to bed every night hoping that we didn't make as many mistakes as we think we did. You guys being here today is already a big step. Your presence today tells you and me how much you want to try as much as you can to do it in the most positive way during your children's teen years. So congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back. Uh, mom guilt or parent guilt is something we all live with. We all question, did we do it right? Have we done it right? Where did I go wrong along the way? Um, a lot of things I hear is, you know, my spouse wasn't there the same way I was there. We didn't parent the same way. We always as parents want to go and feel guilty. But before I move on, I'll just, and I am going to reinforce this, that whatever you're doing, I'm sure you're doing the best you can. So just pat yourself on the back and be proud of yourself as parents, especially in today's world. Teen development. What are our teens going through during this time of their life? Uh, adolescence is first of all divided into three parts. There's the early stage of adolescence, which is ages 12 to 14. Some go as low as 10 to 13 to 14, but we'll say 12 to 14. Middle ages, which is 15 to 17, and the late, which is 18 to 21. So yeah, they're staying uh, teenagers <laughs> or adolescents until they're 21. That's when their prefrontal cortex is completely developed, plus or minus, which is the part of the brain that is used to make rationale and be able to create, to do well with conflict resolution, better decision-making and so on. So we do call adolescent, we do consider at 21 year old still an adolescent. What are they going through during this time? What are the changes? I don't know them anymore. They're not sitting with me. What's going on with them? I find out from other people what's going on with my teen. I don't know if my teen is telling me the truth or not. As difficult as it is as parents to hear this, 
or to say this, this is something very typical I hear all across the board from parents. Um, the stages of adolescence that our teens are going through, they're creating their independence. And Hala, I'll break down a little bit with each stage and how that you know, independence starts to, to create. Their body image, this is something really important we have to keep in mind, especially during social, with social media today. A lot of teens are struggling with body image. They're, you know, it's, it's very difficult. You know, they go on Instagram, they go on TikTok or whatever, what have you, and they see things and then they think that, you know, they should be able to relate to it. They should be able to look like that. They should be able to be like this. Little do they know that that's not the reality, but still it's everywhere. And all these, you know, these teens are looking at them and they're fighting it. They have this internal struggle, this internal conflict. And where do they come out and splurt it all? on parents because they're the ones who are supposed to handle it. So yes, there's a lot of changes in their bodies. Uh, peer relations, they don't know what their friends are, who their friends are, how many of them, you know, how many times do we, how often do we hear, you know what, she did this, he did this. Yeah, no, I'm not talking to her anymore. So there's a lot of changes in the relationships. You know, she's my friend. We see our teens go from one group of friends to a completely different group of friends, you know, and we ask ourselves, what's going on? Why is this happening? And their identity, who am I? What am I? Who am I? What, am I? what are my choices? What decisions do I make? Personality, when we talk about personality, personality by definition is characteristics and qualities that form an individual. And I will stress on the word individual because every one of our children are individuals, just as you're an individual, just as I am an individual. And I think the biggest struggle for parents from what I hear from my professional um, with parents that I work with is they have a hard time understanding that these are individuals. And a lot, you know, we'll talk about how we need to start to accept that they are individuals. Their physical development, their cognitive development, their emotional development, their sexual development, everything, everything about them is changing. So let me just go briefly, I know I don't wanna waste time talking about this too much. Um, in the early adolescence, which is 12 to 14, um, they're growing physically, their bodies are changing, you know, it's, pre it's puberty, there's a lot of changes, they don't know how to relate to it, they don't know how to understand it. Most times they're afraid to ask parents, they're afraid to talk about it. And if you've attended any of the workshops prior to this one, then, you know, we did discuss about how to talk to our children with the changes in their bodies and how to verbalize it and communicate with it, uh, about it. Um, cognitive development. At this age, it's black or white. They don't know how to rationalize. You know, it's either all or nothing, right or wrong. There's no negotiation. It's either their way or our way. And, you know, it's either wrong or right in everything, whether it be with their family, with their friends, uh, with school, with their teachers. You know, I hate this teacher. She's the worst. Oh, I love this teacher, you know, the next day. So there's a lot of conflict in what they cognitively process and their emotions and what they're thinking. They're very egocentric at this age. You know, 12, I'm sorry, 11 to 13, 11 to 4, 12 to 14, I'm sorry, I have two different ages here. 12 to 14, they're very egocentric. The center of their world is them. And anything that's not having to do with them and whatever makes them happy and whatever gives them comfort doesn't fit on their grid. Um, they're pushing boundaries. They want more privacy. They want more independence. So a lot of parents at this age, at this period in their children's lives will come to me and ask me, you know, he's sitting a lot in his room on his own. He's locking the door and being on his own. You know, is that something I need to be concerned about? Of course, you know, we do say that if it's excessive, we do need to be concerned about it. But if it, they're just trying to create their independence and break free of this parent connection and dependence, that's completely normal at this age. Ages 14 to 17, I'm sorry, 15 to 17, which is the middle adolescence, they continue the physical growth. You know, this is when girls are developing tremendously, boys and some, you know, so a lot of boys don't start to really develop and show development. We're talking about facial hair and changes in their bodies, their voices until about 15 to 17. So there's a lot of changes that they have to be able to relate to. So when they come home and they're frustrated and they're unhappy, it's probably them possibly going through what's going on with my body. You know, what am I feeling? What's changing about me? How do I accept what's changing about me? Um, emotional development, relationships, and interest in sexuality. This is when we'll hear a lot of the words, boyfriend, girlfriend, I have a crush on him, I have a crush on her. 
social. They're more independent. They prefer their friends over their families. You know, don't take it personal if your 15 or 16 year old or 17 year old prefers to go on Sunday afternoon to hang out with his friends instead of sit and watch a movie with you. That's typical. That's very normal. If they don't do that, I'm going to wonder why to a certain extent, depending on your child's personality. Uh, cognitive, the prefrontal cortex is low, but still not completely developed. So they're still not able to make rational decisions, but they think they do. So they think they're making the rational decisions. They think they know what they're doing, but at the same time, that part of their brain is still developing. So a lot of the decisions are still made rooted from emotions and not necessarily rationale. I know I'm going fast because I do want to get everything I want to get in before it's the time. But they're more able to think abstract and see things as a greater picture, but they're not able to really rationalize and break down the inside. They do obviously start to develop those skills, but not so much. Decisions still based on emotions, as we said. A late adolescence, which is 18 to 21. And usually by this age, they're plus or minus completely physically developed, just you know, almost practically done. Essentially, there'll be a few changes, but nothing extreme. So they're starting to feel comfortable with their bodies. These are the ages where we'll see a lot of our adolescents will start to come closer to us in a way where they'll be more accepting of who they are. Again, it depends on the relationship of the parent and the child. Cognitive development's almost done. You know, They're able to reason, they're able to identify their values. You know, by this time, we've already instilled what we believe and what our values are, and we're hoping that they will actually manifest and resonate with them. Um, they're mostly independent, emotionally and physically separate from parents. So this is the age where parents, as I tell them, you know, it's time to cut that umbilical cord. It's time to let these kids go and let them be grown, little adults. Of course, let them go to a certain extent so far you know, as far as we can handle, as far as they can handle, depending on their personality and our parenting acceptance. But this is important for our children to allow them to make mistakes and fail and learn from their own mistakes and create their own resilience and build their own personalities. And, you know, we shouldn't be make, doing things on their behalf at this point. You know, 18 to 21, they are adults. In most countries, we consider them adults. So as far as I know, children at this age can pretty much lead their own lives to a certain extent with parents' guidance and uh, supervision, of course. So this is basically the teen um, development that I wanted to talk about. Let me tell you a little bit, if you allow me to, to talk about when we're talking about this, is a lot of the struggles when we talk about parents and their teens and how do I deal with their personalities? How do I understand their personalities and how do I align with them? You know, a typical comment would be like, you know what, when I go into a social gathering, I'm the life of the party. I go in and I talk to everybody and, you know, I'm always out and I have a lot of friends and I have so many people that I know. And my teen just kind of want to sit, just kind of wants to sit in his room and read a book or she prefers to be at home, you know, watching a movie or with one friend or even alone for that matter. They're not us, they're separate. And today you're gonna to be able to understand a little bit why they are doing these things. A lot of parents tend to think that, and of course, you know, there are some red flags we need to look out for if there's sudden change in a child's personality. But if your child has always been like that to a certain extent, we can't come at 18 and tell him, you know what, go out all the time, make friends all the time. I struggled with that with my teenager. You know, I'm very social, I'm very out there and he prefers to be isolated to a certain extent and pick his friends wisely and just be more selective. And as a parent, that was obviously a struggle for me because I wanted him as much as I thought was important to mimic my behavior until I realized that that's just who he is and that's his identity. And I started to accept that. Um, you know, you love clothes. You love to always be properly dressed. You know, your hair is always proper. And then you have this 14 year old daughter who's always a slob. You know, her hair is not washed. She's wearing, you know, baggy clothes and her friends are not. Her friends, some of them kind of, you know, align with what you like. But that's who she is. That, those things don't matter to her. She's somewhere else in her mind. She likes the way she is for who she is. Um, uh, you're an introvert who likes to be at home in the afternoon. And um, your 16-year-old son comes home maybe two hours a day apart from sleeping. Is that not normal? Is he doing something wrong? No. Of course, we keep an eye on him, but that's who he is. He likes to be out. He likes to be active. He likes to be on the go all the time. He likes to be doing things all the time. So a lot of times, parents, we tend to want our children to be similar to us. We tend to want our children to 
We tend to try to mold them into what we think they should be. But a big part of parenting is accepting our children for who they are. I know I'm speaking very fast, but we're gonna go ahead and talk about parenting style. There are four types of parenting styles. Uh, Sandra is gonna share a link right now. Go in there, do the assessment and tally up your scores, please. And every, there's subsections, there are four subsections. So if you can just tally up your scores and then we're gonna come back and talk about what kind of parenting style you fit into the most. So I'm gonna give you guys a good five minutes to do that. And if you have any questions, I'll be answering them on here. Okay, so sorry, link on the chat. Please press on the link and uh, do the questionnaire. بعدين نحسب العلامات وبتصيروا تعرفوا البارنتنج ستايل تبعكم. سو خلصوا ال اكزاكتلي في كاتيجوري A, B, C, and D. شوفوا كم جواب جاوبتوا على A, كم جواب جاوبتوا على B, and just come back with the numbers for me to talk about which parenting style you fit into the most. اوكي. سو بدنا توتال A, توتال B, توتال توتال لكل واحد. اكزاكتلي. And do be honest with yourselves, guys. You don't have to share this with me. This is for you. Do be honest when you're assessing yourselves. It's anonymous. <laughs> And while you're doing this assessment, keep in mind that I know a lot of people will say, um, you know, I'm a, you know, I do this with this child. If you have more than one child, I do this with this child or this child. So you can make several columns and answer for each specific child because it, we are different parents sometimes with different children at home. Nati, two more minutes, unless someone needs extra time.
Okay, does anybody need some extra time or are we good to go? Uh, just the uh, two minutes. Okay, two minutes. No. Take your time. Shall we move on? Okay, Maya. Yalla, let's go. Great. Okay. Um, so a lot of people would ask me, you know, Maya, why do I need to know my parenting style? Why is it important for me as a parent to understand I am who I am? And a lot of parents will say, according to who wish you. Essentially, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to approach our children the way they present us as their personality types. And we do notice a lot of parents who have multiple children parent different children differently according to what their personalities and their characteristic traits are. But it's very important during our teen years, during their teen years, to make sure that our parenting style is evolving and still somehow aligning to who they're becoming. Because as I said, they're changing, they're developing. Every aspect of them is developing. Yes, a lot of you know who they are is you know, there's always that nature versus nurture debate, you know, is it environment or is it um, nature, you know, are they born with it, is it genetics? There is a big debate around that and we still don't know what the number is and how much it is, is. but they do believe that the, adult, the years of adolescence is the, large, the most profound years of their lives in defining who they are and creating their personality traits. And a lot of times, you know, depending on whatever they're going through or whatever the home's going through or whatever harmony the home is, is living with is helps them cultivate a healthy development during their um, 
adolescent years. So the importance of knowing who we are as parents, we forget to sit back and really reflect as a parent, you know, who am I, you know, what, what am I, what is it like for me to be a parent? What are my traits? So if you answered mostly A, then it's, you're an authoritarian, which means you focus on punishment over actual discipline. And by the way, guys, there's no right or wrong kind of parenting per se. Of course, there are you know, some that we prefer over the others. And there's one that I personally don't prefer. If you want me to tell you from my experience at work and what I've seen cause or create damage or destructive somehow with their teens. But anyways, the first one A is authoritarian. If you answered B on the majority of your questions, it's, or if you answer more on the B section, then you fall under the authoritative parenting style, which means you create positive relationship, you enforce personal uh, rules. So, you know, this is the type of parent that respects the child's opinion, lets them give and take a little bit more, but at the same time, you know, creates strict boundaries. You know, these are the rules and, you know, I'm explaining the rules to you. I'm communicating why it is the way it is. Mish, just because I said so, you know, an authoritarian uh, would be more like a reply would be because I said so. An authoritative would be, well, you know what, let's discuss where this rule came from and how we came about making this rule and why your father and I or my partner and I or just myself, whatever it is, are, you know, applying this rule and implementing this. So we give reasons, we communicate, we give and take a little bit more if we fall under the authoritative uh, parenting style. If you answered C, if the, the majority of your answers were on the C section, then you tend to be a permissive parent, meaning you don't enforce the rules. You know, you allow kids to be kids, you know, and I don't want to say it's the hippie style, but it's the more of, you know what, they are creating their identity and I'm not going to involve myself a lot. I'm going to kind of let them be and let them do what they want so you know I'm the kind of mom who will you know say that there's a consequence but then there won't really be a consequence you know I end up feeling sorry for my child or or feeling like you know what I don't want to feel like I have to do this and the last uh, category is helicopter parent which is something very typically I see it a lot in our cultures and our you know communities around here and that's the constant interaction with ongoing interference. You know, that's the mom that will show up at school with the lunchbox because her child forgot it at home or will, you know, find the test from last year and help her child practice with it in order for them to make sure that they're ready for the test. You know, that's the parent who will show up at birthday parties and will talk to every single child and make sure that their child is. And again, depending on who the child is, sometimes helicopter parenting is necessary but then again, to a certain degree, because helicopter parent is preparing your child to be dependent on you and that development stage where they're becoming independent and they're latching off. If we continue to be helicopter parents at the, in their adolescence year, adolescent years, then we are suppressing them from that natural development that they're trying to do, or we're somehow giving them a, a signal that says, you know what, you're not allowed to be independent and I'm always going to be hovering over your head kind of like a helicopter. And by the way, and, you know, I say this with no judgment, there are a lot of parents and I've seen them, you know, in my practice that will actually continue to do that throughout college and then into their, you know, career life and then into their marriage life. And, you know, and we've seen along the lines and, you know, from research and from my experience at work, a lot of parents who tend to do that are it is a destructive approach to parenting. So helicopter parenting when they're little kids, you know, when they're toddlers and they're growing up and they still need that is acceptable. But during adolescence, authoritarian and helicopter are pretty much the two that we want to kind of try to dilute away and meet halfway through authoritative and permissive. And again, a lot of parents will be a mix of all four of these. So some parents will, in certain circumstances, you know, incidents or circumstances have to be an authoritarian or an authoritative or a permissive or a helicopter parent. But when I'm asking you to choose your parenting style, I'm talking about the majority of the time. You know, so your teen comes home from a party. Are you going to say, hey, did you have fun? All right, cool. Good night. Or are you going to sit there and say, who did you play with? What did you do? How come you did that? Or is it going to be, you know what, tell me about the party. You know, how did it go? You know, who was there? You know, tell me what you liked about it. You know, what was it like? You know, did you have fun? What was fun about it? Kind of more of an open stream communication as, as opposed to a helicopter parent is the parent that will drop them off at the, at the party, be right 
outside the party, if not inside the party, and make sure that they're communicating with them the whole time on the phone. And then when they get back, they start to, you know, hover over them and ask them every little detail because it's creating a lack of trust within the, the teen. And again, I say, depending on our children's or our teens or adolescents' personality types, sometimes we do need to be helicopter parents. Sometimes they do need that parent to step up a little bit in their years of adolescence, but we do need to make sure that we're not doing it too much. Authoritarians, we want to try to slow down if we fit into that category a little bit more because it does create that lack of trust. You know, when I'm judging my child and I'm punishing them and I'm not giving them reason, I'm doing two things. One, I'm breaking the trust or I'm breaking the, the stream of communication. And two, I'm letting them believe that they will always be told what to do by others without being given a reason. So, you know, just ask yourself, do you want your son one day at work to be told what to do without give, being given a good reason or in their relationships or with their friendships or whatever it is? So just ask yourself, you know, being that kind of parent during their adolescent year, is this are, are these is this approach something that I want them to be accustomed to as adults when they grow up or when they become older adults? So you Maya, we, before you move on, we asked these uh, the audience, our audience, uh, most of them, the majority until now are B. Uh, so uh, that's, that's, that's yeah. great. Wonderful. I always find it interesting to you know ask parents this question because. And, you know, this is why I said be honest with ourselves, because a lot of us do, we are authoritative because our, our teens impose that on us, you know, especially today, you know, today's generation is different from older generations, you know, teens are very adamant about saying what they want and how they want it and the way they want it. And if they don't get what they want, the way they want it, and whichever way they want it, we have seen, you know, with social media, with research, with, you know, a lot of parents are now, you know, very connected and know what's going on platforms like Sierra, for example, that we are there's so much awareness on creating a good sense of communication with our children. So as authoritative parents, it's extremely important to maintain that. But at the same time, you know, not, you know, not be suppressing yourself too much. And when need be, you do kind of alternate to the other parent. And then something I also see very typically, guys, by the way, if we have children, multiple children at home, and if we have, let's say, an 18-year-old, and then we have a seven-year-old, we tend to automatically be authoritarian with that seven-year-old. And that's wonderful. But we do need to keep in mind, is that seven-year-old in need of that kind of parenting style? So, you know, these assessments are available if you need them. And I can send them to, you know, Sandra can even put them in the library if need be, to go back and reassess yourself on each individual child, what you tend to be uh, when it comes to parenting them. Now yes. we're going to move on. Uh, we'll put all the, the tests in our library under uh, in the library of parenting uh, yes. so people can access it again. We'll even put the results uh, later on so they have all the info also. Thank you, Sandra. Um, in order to assess the teen's parenting style, and this is not an assessment that I made, I, I didn't write it on the assessment I should have, um, Carl Jung, which is a pillar of psychiatry and psychology in the history of our field, he actually was an analytical psychologist or psychiatrist who worked on behavior. And unlike Freud, for example, because they were very you know, opposing each other, they were very you know, in battle together, he believed that human behavior has multifacets. So, you know, you're born something and then you 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 develop into something and then you develop into something even more so this assessment will help us understand our teen years today so as you're doing this assessment by jung please keep in mind that we are assessing your adolescent in the moment we're not talking about the way they used to be when they were five and they were little babies and they listened to us and we're not talking about what we want them to be and i ask you to really be very objective, Yanni. Be very honest with yourself and try to put yourself in the mindset of your teen as you're doing this personality type test. Okay, I will publish uh, the test. I will put the link of the test on the chat as well. Uh, yalla, just give me one second. And then also, Sandra, sorry, guys, when you're also doing this assessment, do, um, um, how are we going to do this to where they tally it up? Okay, so do, there are two columns, right? There's yes and no for each one. Do how many yeses and how many noes in each column so we can come back and do the assessment later. So typically, for example, um, how many A's and how many B's? You know, each question has two options. Just do one or two and just write goal orientation and then write number one, number two, number three. Is it an A or a B or one or two in the answer? You'll, you'll understand it as soon as you open the assessment.
اوكي ليلي هلا عم يسمعنا اذا قطش عنده الانترنت سو حطينا بالشات اللينك للتين بيرسوناليتي تيست كبسوا عليه واول جواب هو اي ثاني جواب هو بي من بعد ما تخلصوه خلينا نعد اي قد ايه في اي قد ايه في بي تنقدر كمان نعرف البيرسوناليتي تبع التين Sorry, Sandra. Let me put it on. I'm put number one, whether it's A or B, number two, A, B. Ah, hold on okay. to it. Let me jump on the thinnest slide okay. right here, basically, and see what's what. Ah, okay. Okay. So you, we don't count. We just put next to each number, whether it's A or B. Okay. I know it's a long assessment, so I'm going to give another maybe five minutes. If anybody doesn't need that much, or if you're closer to being done, just notify us, please. Maya, if you want to just the table, so you know what to expect. No, next to each number, it's going to be a letter. Um, so Sorry, like number one, are you an A or B? Number two, did you answer A or B? Or, you know, the answer one, answer two. And then we're going to tally this up, these up and then find out where you fit in. Okay. They know that we have to fill. Sure. Um, okay.
Okay, Maya, is that it? Let's have a coffee. Okay. So now what I'd like you to do is see how many you got here and put the number total here, please. And how many you got here and put the number total. So for the first category, goal orient, general orientation, how many first answers did you give the A and how many basically total of each one? Same thing for the modes of operation, the information gathering and the decision making. So if I basically did two here, then I would put two here and maybe three here. While you're doing that, um, what we believe to be an extrovert and an introvert or planned and a spontaneous, they are what you see is what you get, but there's a lot more to it. But because we're short on time, I'm not gonna go too much in depth into what these are, as opposed to what we're gonna tally up and kind of define what your child tends to be or your teen tends to be most as far as their personality type. And by the way, this assessment can be done on, your, on you as well, not just on your children. <laughs> that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So the next thing, sorry, there's a lot of adding and doing things today, but let's do this next. Your total for hands-on and your total for spontaneous. Can you add those up, please? And then your total for hands-on and your total for planned. Can you add those up, please? So hands-on and spontaneous, hands-on and planned. The next one is your total for theoretical and for subjective. And then for theoretical, and for objective. So again, hands-on and spontaneous is number one. Hands-on and planned is number two. Theoretical and subjective is three. Theoretical and objective is four. You guys ready for the final? <laughs> okay. So which um, one of these <laughs> you tend to fit into your child? I'm sorry, your teen tend to fit in the most. Is it hands-on sponge? Is it, a, are they a mover? Are they planners? Are they connectors? Or are they thinkers? Which one is the highest? And then, by the way, they can be very close, but we do want to take the highest. And if they're equal, then your teen does tend to be able to be both, a bit of both. So the mover's main core value would be freedom. 
So, you know, after you do this assessment, I'd like you to go to your teenagers and look at them and say, you know, do you feel like you value freedom, responsibility, relationship, and competent or competency? And I'll explain what competency is in a minute. Um, the most. And let's see how much they tend to just, you know, off the top of their head, tend to align with it. So the mover's personality style, they're courageous. Oh, by the way, the introvert or the extrovert, like I said, these are the people who tend to be, and when I say introvert and extrovert, it's not a negative way of looking at it. Extroverts tends to speak freely about whatever's on their mind. They develop their thoughts by talking through with others. Extroverts gain energy from chatting with others. Introverts are someone more territorial with their mental space. So they're the kind of people who like to process and think on their own and then come up and speak. They need time to think and reflect before sharing their thoughts. Introverts gain energy from quiet time. So like I said, you know, I couldn't understand my son because, you know, when I needed something, I would go to my friends and I'd speak it out. Of course, you know, fault of profession, um, my son would kind of think and reflect on his own. And, you know, typically parents will start to think, you know, what's going on with him? Why does he do that? Well, at the end of the day, my son is an introverted person, but that's not necessarily a negative thing. Most people tend to think that having being an introvert is not necessarily a positive thing, but none of it is negative. So mover personality is courageous, exploratory, and playful. You know, they seek action and adventure. They crave a variety and enjoy improvising. If the mover personal personality style is your dominant style or your child's dominant style, um, they're good at thinking on their feet. Their minds automatically find the fastest way to do things and make them fun. They change their courses often. I'm sorry, I, I didn't change yours. Um, as is needed and aren't likely to let bumps in the road slow them down. So if an inter so if a, a mover has a parent who is permissive, you know, that might work. But then if they have a parent who's authoritarian, that's not going to work. You know, they're oppressing this resilience they have, this ability to improvise, this ability to need variety and action and adventure. And if they have helicopter parents, they're going to feel, you know, suffocated from their helicopter parents. Uh, you know, alongside if they have authoritative parents who are a bit too involved and too much into their lives. This is when we start to understand that, you know, they are developing, this is who they are. And when they are behaving in this way, we are going to accept them and judge them, even if it doesn't align with who I am as an individual, who I am as a person, you know, and I need to make sure that my parenting style is true to who I am as a person. And I'm not trying too hard because this is when our teenagers tend to break away from us. Um, the connector makes decisions subjectively and prefers theoretical gathering of information. Um, they're considerate, they're cooperative, they're encouraging, they seek harmony and personal connection. They prefer to make decisions that feel good and are aligned with their values. So this is that student who will do a lot of the, um, you know, the community service at school and they'll help their friends and they'll help others. And, you know, they're very cooperative. They're the ones who will be, you know, work well in groups and be able to work well with their siblings at home for the most part. So, you know, allow that to grow, you know, nourish that, encourage that cultivate as much acceptance when it comes to that, even if you don't believe that's the way it should be, allow them to be themselves. Thinkers make decisions objectively and prefer theoretical gathering of information. So they're the kind of people who will do a lot of research, you know, he'll, they'll need a lot of information. They'll be, you know, even for a test, they'll be studying a lot for it, you know, they'll be reviewing many times, they'll be getting as much as information as possible. They might need a parent who's a little bit more involved, but at the same time, from a distance. So, you know, a helicopter parent here, like I said, sometimes we do need to be there for our children as different parenting style. They do need an authoritative parent because they are growing and developing and need to detach from us. But at the same time, they might need a little bit of extra involvement from the parent. Planners Sorry. prefer hand I, on. Sorry, yes. Before you continue, this, uh, and some people are asking, how do we calculate? If you can just go back one, one yes. slide. Uh, the yeah. last, so, so to get, um, so it's hands on. Um, hands on, it's right here. Hands-on yeah. and spontaneous. Okay. Hands-on, planned, theoretical. Okay, yeah, no, I'll, I'll just share this, thank you. Okay. It's okay, you can continue. Okay. 
So the planner prefer, prefers hands-on gathering of information and a planned approach. You know, they're the people who are very, and this is why we call it competency, because they are very organized and prepared. You know, they need a valid reason for everything. They're very organized, they're very prepared, they're very dependable. You know, they're that child at home that you have that you know you do not need to worry about. You know, they are the the, the children that are going to start to create independence a little bit sooner than their their peers. They are those teens that are going to be very organized in their homework. You don't really need to be asking them about it. You don't need to be asking them about their plans as much as maybe a child who might be a mover who's, you know, kind of all over the place, plus or minus. So, you know, that planner needs a parent who is permissive and authoritative. You know, they do need to allow that detachment to happen. They do crave consistency and things in their place. So as much as they want to be or, you know, on their own and dependable and, you know, independent, they do need the surroundings. So, you know, this, this teenager, for example, who would come to me typically and start to complain about whatever's going on in the house will tell me, you know, my mom is all over the place, or, you know, my dad changes plans suddenly, or my friends change plans suddenly. And I just, I can't seem to align with them. I can't seem to sync with them. You know, I just, I can't, it frustrates me. So they'll end up, especially if they're an introverted planner where they're, you know, they're on their own, they're working on their own, they're happy working on their own. If they're an extroverted planner, we'll tend to see them switch from one group of friends to the other and so on and you know this tool requires so much more time to work on it and I would love to give you more time on it but you have the overview and uh, Sandra I think we are going to be posting this uh, yes you're going to be able to come back and refer back to it and look at it as much as you want on the platform I will make sure the test is on the platform can you hear me, Sandra? I can you hear me now yes Okay, I will make sure the test is on the platform in library in parenting and all the results as well, so people can go back and double check it. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, I know I've taken up too much time. I do want to leave some time for questions. So how do we align? So we know who we are. We identify what our team is. And most important, what they are not. And this is very important to me that I have to say this. You know, we need to accept our teens for who they are. We need to be able to allow our team at the same time. You know, we've had, you know, up to 11 years, 12 years of, you know, embedding our values in them. And, you know, they've been exposed to us. They've been, you know, there's so much conditioning that have gone on with who we are as individuals. They've learned the traits they want to take from us. It doesn't mean that if we have, a, you know, an oppositional child or a child or a teen who is very defiant, you know, at their, you know, 12, 13, that we need to let them go and be. No, of course not. We will create boundaries. You know, like I said, the authoritarian parent is going to create the boundaries. You know, to me, an authoritarian parent is the kind of parent that kind of puts the frame and then just lets their children make their own decisions within the frame. You know, I do create my value system. There are my rules, you know, exactly why the frame is there, you know, exactly how it's there. And I'm standing on the outside, you know, do you need me to be a permissive parent in this time? I'm going to move away. Do you need me to be more involved? I'm going to come closer. And this is very important when we're aligning our parenting style with our team. So, you know, why am I saying this? Because a lot of parents come and say, you know, we're fighting a lot. Like I said, you know, we're not getting along. There's so many problems. Problems. I don't know what to do anymore. Now that you know what your teen's personality type is, or for the most part, and you know what your parenting style is, you'll be able to adjust a little bit more to kind of meet halfway. And, you know, talking to them about the differences, highlighting their strengths, you know, they don't need to be like you. A lot of teens struggle because they want to be like their mom. They want to be like their dad. You know, they, they want to, you know, we're their idols, we're their role models. So they want to be like us, or they want to be like their siblings, for that matter, if they have older siblings. And it's very important that they understand that, you know, you have strengths and you have weaknesses and that's okay. And, you know, and the weaknesses, I'm sorry, you have strength and you have uniqueness, I apologize. And your uniqueness is something that is unique to you and you are an independent a person and you are an individual. Um, problem solve and compromise together. You know, we have to give a little bit, guys. They are becoming little adults and we do need to respect their growth and their development. Accepting the differences and accepting and exploring their perspective. It's always interesting when parents come and tell me, you know, after we sat with you after a few sessions and a lot of parents will come in with their teens and we'll do sessions together. 
<coughs> excuse me, and they'll say, you know what, I never really saw it from their perspective. You know, I never allowed myself to empathize and just be in my child's mind and understand it how they see it or how they perceive it or how they understand it. And sometimes when we allow ourselves to do that, then we allow ourselves to approach it from a different perspective, you know, from a different approach. So if I see that something that my teen is doing that doesn't necessarily align with my values, if I'm going to come at him or at her in a very oppositional way or in a very you know abrupt way, they're going to you know it's going to create a clash and they're going to turn around and they're going to walk away from us. So if I go in and I put myself in their shoes and I allow myself to see it from their perspective, and I know that it sounds a lot like we have to make a lot do a lot of differences and they don't know. I'm saying we have to meet halfway. They also need to have an understanding of our boundaries. <coughs> Other ways that parents can do that is help a child anticipate what's coming. You know, let them know what's coming. Let them know that, you know, what you're going through right now is a part of the developmental stages that you're going through. Adolescence is something tough, you know, validate what they're going through. Let them understand that, you know, we're here for you. You know, we're your support and we're here for you. Sorry. <coughs> uh, create open communication. And this is something, if you've attended any of my workshops and Sandra knows, to me, this is the pillar of parenting. When our children know that they can communicate with us with zero judgment and full acceptance, our children will always come to us, no matter what age. You know, we want to be that come to person in their lives. And no matter what part of their lives we're talking about, we have to allow open communication. And let me tell you another note on that. A lot of teenagers who come to me will tell me my mom's communication is, or idea of communication, or my dad's, I'm sorry, I keep you know, talking about moms, but dad's communication style is telling me what they went through when they were little and telling, sharing me with their stories. When you want to communicate with a teenager, an adolescent, let them talk. Just listen to them. You know, and as soon as I tell parents that, you know, when their teen comes and talks to me and then I sit with the parents and I talk to them, all of a sudden the dynamic of the relationship changes. So just pay attention to when you're talking to your teen, how much are you preaching and how much are you actually listening to them? And a lot of parents will call me and say, you know, I said this to her and I said this to her and I said this to her. And then my next question will be, what did she say to you? Or what did he say to you? You know, it's a lot of what I said and a lot of a little of what she said. And that's typical parenting. You know, we do want to you know, pass, or pass on our thoughts and our ideas and protect them, but we cannot protect them. We need to allow them to be their own individuals, but at the same time, make sure they're being their own individuals in the right path. Um, accept their individuality and honor their independence, cultivate values and avoid shaping into who you want them to be. You know, a lot of us, you know, I want him to be like this, you know, I don't want him to be like his uncle or his his grandfather or his cousin or my neighbor or his father for that matter. You know, I don't want her to be like her mother. You know, I don't want her or this particular characteristic trait in her mother. So I'm gonna, you know, mold her into becoming somebody else. You know, well, maybe she has that trait that's similar to her mom. You need to let her be or vice versa. And avoid raising a mini me. You know, a lot of us, you know, we learn from our mistakes and we wanna make sure our children don't make mistakes. The mistakes are the greatest part of the learning process and they need to fail. And of course, within reason, they do need to make mistakes. I spoke as fast as I could, Sandra. <laughs> I know I took up a lot more time than I should have, but I hope that you know uh, these tools were able to help you see it. Now, something I didn't tell you that I do want to tell you is the assessment that you did of your teens. And I wanted to say this till the very end. We're going to post another one for your team to do it themselves. Why do I do that? Because with all due respect, and you know, I've been there so I know what you're probably going to think now so I'm going to go ahead and say on my bat um, a lot of us tend to want our teens to be a specific thing so a lot of the answers will answer in that way or a lot of us are so frustrated with our teens that we end up answering it in a different way so you know allow your teens to come in and take this assessment and see how much what you perceive is your teen aligns with what they are and what they see the world as and see how much your parenting style needs to be adjusted to accept your team for who they are and in a way that accepts them. And do the personality test yourself as well. You know, see what kind of personality you are and see how you can somehow understand that, you know, you're an individual and they're an individual and how do we align it to live in harmony and create a healthy relationship with our children. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maya. Yane, <laughs> to Well, we are eager to try it also with the kids um, 
حتى نشوف اذا عم نقدر نفهمهم مثل ما قلتي او تو اسس ذير بيرسوناليتي مثل ما هي سو so, هلا رح نوقف اللايف ستريمينج وي ويل ستوب برودكاستينج وي ار جوينج تو ستوب راوند تيبل اوكي رح نخلص وين نحن اند وي ار جوينج تو موف تو رومز So please, uh, once we are done here, refresh your browser. I'm going to refresh. Uh, section is my rooms. There will be a room uh, is uh, the same name. Yani personality, team personality. Photo uh, alaya, please. Wohoni kefina nehke sawa through camera, through voice. We can ask asila, and it's not recorded. To continue our discussion. Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you. I will stop the recording. Uh, خلينا نلتقي نرجع بيرومز. Thank you. Thank you.